Hey y'all, this is Trish with Crafting Cousins. We appreciate you stopping by today. If you are new here, we hope that you will hit the subscribe button and come back often. And if you're a returning friend, thank you so much for your support. Do you have a tear tray and need some ideas for decorating it? Today's video is packed with many DIYs for your tear tray that are neutral and can be left out all year. We hope that you will sit back, relax, and enjoy, and maybe even be inspired to make some yourself. Hey y'all, it's Trish. As some of you know, when we do these tear tray projects, I set it up a little bit different than I do our regular video. We normally go from one project right into the other. That way we can get them all done because there's so many of these tiny little mini projects. All right, let's get started. For these first two projects, we're going to use these little signs. The square one I picked up from Dollar General when it was 90% off. It's missing a piece, but I didn't need that anyway. And then this little house looking one I picked up from the thrift store, but I'm pretty sure that it came from Hobby Lobby at some point. We're also going to use these graphics that I designed. I will put a link down below if you would like to have a copy. And we're going to be using some paint. I'm going to use Waverly chalk paint in white, a pencil, and some permanent markers. The first thing I did was grab my sanding block and sand these down a little bit. You don't have to do a lot. I just wanted to take as much of that wording off as I could. This is going to help me when I start painting. Then we're going to take our Waverly chalk paint and we're going to give these a really good coat, set them aside, let them dry, and then we'll touch it up. We call this giving it a coat and a half. Once our paint is dry, I'm going to transfer my graphics over to them and I'm using my favorite method. All you do is cut apart your graphics, scribble on the back with a pencil, lay it where you want it on your project, and then trace over it. This is going to transfer it onto your project or at least it's going to transfer the lines so that you can copy over them. Once you get those on there, you're just going to use either paint and a small brush or some permanent markers to fill them in. I know if you have a cutting machine, you could use a cutting machine and do this easily. Yes, I do have one, but we like to show you guys that even if you don't have a cutting machine, you can still make these kind of projects for your tear tray or for your home decor. Now I'm just filling these in with my permanent marker. For the small lines and the letters, I used a graphic illustration marker. This is just finer. You could also use a fine tip Sharpie. And then for the heart, I used my bigger permanent marker. Then I took a pencil and just kind of went around the edges, smoothed it out with my finger, and these projects are finished. For this next one, I'm going to use this unfinished mini rolling pin. I got this from Hobby Lobby at the back, some Waverly chalk paint in white, a black furniture repair marker from the Dollar Tree, and a permanent marker. Now for this one, I decided I wanted it to have that two-tone look. I'm going for like a black and white look on my tear tray. So I wanted to stain the little handles on these in the very end. I like using these furniture repair markers. They're not as messy as stain. They don't smell and they dry instantly. Once I got the end stained, I'm gonna come back in with my paint and I'm going to paint the rolling part of my little rolling pin. I'm using the Waverly chalk paint in white because that was the look I was going for. Now you could completely paint all of yours. You could stain all of it, whatever your preference. Once my paint is dry, I'm going to come back with a pencil and I'm tracing in just a little heart and then I'm going to fill that in with my permanent markers. And that's all I'm doing to this one. Now, you could add a word to this if you wanted to. You could put home or family or your last name, but I like to keep it simple and I was really happy with how it turned out with just the little heart. Now for our next project, I'm going to use this unfinished 
window that I got from Hobby Lobby, a piece of leftover garland from Christmas, and some of this boxwood pick from Walmart, and then my Waverly chalk paint in white. The first thing I'm going to do is paint this, and really that's the only thing that I'm going to do to it other than make my little wreath. I love this window. As soon as I saw it, I knew what I wanted to do with it. It was back in the unfinished wood section at Hobby Lobby, but I will say that you should measure your tray and make sure it's going to fit. I just have one of the little mini tier trays and my biggest opening is four inches and this does not fit inside of it. I ended up having to stand it up outside of the tray and it still looks good, but it didn't fit. So if you're going to get one of these, you might want to check your tear tray, make sure it's going to fit in there, or you could do the same thing I did. While our paint is drying, I'm going to take this leftover piece of garland from Christmas and I'm trimming it down. It was just too fuzzy and I didn't like how it looked, but when I trim it and then form it into a circle, now I have a cute little wreath. I love how this looks. Now I wanted to give it something extra, so I took this boxwood pick that I got from Walmart and I'm cutting off these little leaves and I'm going to glue them down. I put a little bit of glue on the end and then for the next one, I'm going to take the end of it and push it right up under the top of the first one. This kind of makes it look like that it just flows all the way around. Now I did have to take off some of the leaves on the inside because to me it was just too full, but I was really happy with how this turned out. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. You could just use the garland. That looks fine too, but I thought the boxwood kind of elevated it and made it look like it goes for all year. Once we're finished with that, we'll use a little glue to attach it and this project is complete. Now for this one, it's the simplest one we're going to do. I'm just going to take one of these wood slices that I got from Hobby Lobby, some of these finial dowel caps, I think they were a quarter of an inch, and then I'm using a little bit of clear wax. This is the Waverly Clear Wax. You really don't have to use the clear wax. This was just something that I thought to do, but it wasn't necessary. I put some of it on the top of my wood round and then I decided to also add it to the little finials that's going to be the feet of this. We're making a mini riser to go on our tear tray. Y'all, you don't need the wax. Once I had finished that, I figured out where I wanted my feet to go. Then I'm just going to put a little bit of hot glue on the bottom, stick these down, and this little riser is complete. Now this is going to be another simple one. We're going to use one of these little peat pots that I had left over from last year, one of these little styrofoam balls, some of this boxwood pick that I got from Walmart, and some Waverly chalk paint. I decided to paint my little peat pot. Now you really don't have to. I like the way that it looks rustic without the paint, but I had this theme in my head of the black and white, you know, neutral tear tray. So I decided to go ahead and give mine a really good coat and then we're just going to set it aside and let that paint completely dry. Once the paint is dry, I'm going to add my initial to the front. I used a pencil to sketch it on just to get my dimensions and then I'm going to fill it in with a permanent marker and that's all there is to that one. Now I'm going to take one of those little styrofoam balls. I'll use a little bit of hot glue and glue it into the pot. And then we're gonna take some of these little limbs off of this pick and glue those in. Now I did end up cutting them down because I thought they were a little too tall and I used my awl to punch a hole in that styrofoam. That just helps it go in a little bit better. I put a little bit of hot glue on the end and these stay in perfectly. I was actually really happy with how this piece turned out. Now I'm using this boxwood pick because I got it for 97 cent at Walmart and I love how it looks, but you could use any greenery that you want to use. Thank you for stopping by our channel today. If you are new here, we hope that you will subscribe by clicking on the little button below. Make sure you ring the bell so you will be notified every time we upload new content. We upload new videos each week offering a variety of DIYs, trash to treasure projects, and tips, tricks, and hacks. We just know you'll find something you like with Crafting Cousins.
Now this is another simple greenery piece. We're just going to use some of these little styrofoam balls in small and medium and some of this adhesive back moss that I got from Walmart. All we're gonna do is cover these styrofoam balls with this moss. Do you have to have the adhesive back? No, you don't. You could use the moss from the Dollar Tree and use some glue, but y'all, that stuff is so messy. This stuff here cuts down on that tremendously. They do sell this adhesive back boss at Hobby Lobby, but it's like $13 or $14 a pack, and it's only $6 a pack at Walmart, and it works perfectly. All I'm doing is cutting off some little pieces. I peel off the back of this and then stick it to the ball. You can butt it up against each other. You can't tell where the seams are. Sometimes it overlapped and it worked in perfectly. I just love how these turned out. I love adding green pieces to my tear trays. I think that it just kind of brightens it up. So that little pot that we did with the greenery in it and these little moss balls are really just going to be the perfect finishing touches on these tear trays. And they're so easy to make. If you've been with us any time, you know I have to do a bead garland. I'm going to use these black and white wooden beads from Walmart and some twine that I got from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna start off with a tassel. All I do is wrap my twine around my hand about 20 times, and then we're going to trim that off. I'll slip those loops off of my hand, take the end of my twine, and tied around those loops into a double knot. You want to make sure that you get this really tight. We're gonna trim off the short end, and then we're gonna take the long end and measure out about 20 inches and cut that off. Now we're gonna go back to that tassel. I'm gonna gather it up in my hand. I take another little piece of twine and wrap it around the top about a half an inch down. I'm gonna wrap it about four times and then tie it into a double knot. Make sure you get this tight. I do put just a little bit of hot glue on mine. This just helps hold it in place. And then I'm going to trim those ends off. Now we can cut open those loops and we have a tassel just that easy. I'm gonna fluff it out and then I'm gonna trim off the ends and this is going to give me a pretty tassel for one end of my garland. Now, once we get that trimmed off, I'm going to take a plastic darning needle. This is just a really large needle. I put my twine through it, and then I'm gonna start putting my beads on. I decided to do a pattern of two white, one black, all the way down. And I did it until I had about 16 inches worth of beads. I did measure it out, and it came almost exactly to 16 inches. But you do it as long as you would like. Once you get all of your beads on there, we're going to make another tassel. I'm doing the same thing I did before. Just wrap it around your hand about 20 times, slip off those loops, and then I'm going to tie it onto the end of my garland, getting it as close to those beads as I can. We'll do a double knot, trim it off. Then we're gonna pull it down, take another piece of twine, wrap around the top about four times, and tie another double knot. Once you get that on, put a little bit of glue to secure it and then trim off those ends. Now we're going to cut open those loops, fluff it out and trim it up and we have a bead garland. Okay, so some of you said that you would like to be able to buy some laser cut pieces that I did with my machine. So I am going to be setting up an Etsy shop and these pieces are the pieces that I made that I will sell for your family style tear tray. Now the first thing I have is this little family, um, this little round family sign. Of course, I have still on mine, that's my name, but it would be personalized for your name. I have not glued anything down yet because I want to whitewash this background. I just wanted to show you what was available. I think I'm gonna offer it as a kit where you can paint it, glue it down and everything yourself. And then I will offer it as a full set where I actually do the painting and the gluing and mail it to you. Those will be two different prices. So I'll have two different listings for those. But this is going to be a personalized name sign. Then we're gonna have this one that says, this is us. Again, it's not glued down yet because I do want to whitewash the back. 
we're going to have this little leaner sign that says welcome. We're going to have a little cutting board that says home sweet home. And then we're going to have a party of sign. Now, since there's just me and my husband, we are a party of two. But of course, this can be personalized to you and how many members are in your family. Now, this one has the little faux ship lap lines that I cut with my machine. And I'm just going to whitewash the back of these. Then I'm going to glue them down and I'm going to stain them black. I will rush through this so you don't have to watch the whole thing. And then I'll show you the completed set at the end. To do a whitewash, I'm going to use Waverly chalk paint. When I get to the end, I like to put some water in mine and shake it up, and then it works kind of like a whitewash. It's not thick like my regular paint, and that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to give these pieces a good coat of my watered down paint or a whitewash, whatever you prefer to call it. I did paint the front and the back and this dries really fast. By the time I had painted all the fronts, they were ready to turn over and paint the back. That's a personal preference. While I was painting them, I realized that four of them were gonna need a way to stand up. So I grabbed four of these little wood blocks from the Dollar Tree and I painted those as well. I will be including these blocks in the pieces that I'm selling so that you'll have a way of standing these up. Now we are going to stain our wording that goes on our signs. I'm using a furniture repair marker. This just worked out better for me. It's not as messy. And y'all, these pieces are very fragile. The machine has to cut these so small that they break really easily. So just be careful with them while you're using them. I did break some, but I was able to put them back together when I glued it and you couldn't even tell it. I am thinking though that I could glue these down even if you buy the unfinished pieces and it'll make them sturdier whenever I mail them out but that's up to you you just let me know if you would like them to be glued down or not either way is fine now I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to go back over my shiplap lines. I just thought that this helped bring them back out. You could still see them, but this just kind of finished it up. And when you run your finger over it, it kind of blends it in and it makes it look like it's real pieces of wood put together. Then I'm going to take my furniture repair marker and I'm going to go around the edges of each piece. And this is just going to finish it off. To me, it makes it look more professional. I was careful not to get it on the front or the back. And it also brought in that color theme that I was wanting on my tear tray. I love to see the black and white together. Now we're going to start putting our letters or our words down onto our pieces. I did line them up before I glued them down. And on this welcome sign, I've decided that I think the best thing to do on future pieces is to score those letters onto that sign. This was really hard to line up. And I think if I had scored it on there, it would have made it a lot easier. Now for the glue, you want something with a fine tip. I'm using Loctite glue and that works really well for me. I started off using these tweezers, but you see I broke the M with them, so I ended up just using my fingers. It was much easier. I put just a little bit of glue on the back, and then I stick it down. Now, if some squeezed out, I did just use a soft brush and go over it and take it off so that it wasn't clumped up, and once it dried, you couldn't even tell it. I love how these pieces look once you put them together. Now, again, I can go ahead and glue these down for you. And then you could just whitewash the whole thing and then come back and stain or paint over the top of your letters. And that would work as well. So whatever works best for you, you can see that I was having to put pieces together. But again, once it was all down, you couldn't even tell. Y'all, I absolutely love how this set came out. It was perfect on my tear tray and I think that it just made a piece that you can leave out all year and it looks gorgeous. We're going to continue to put all of these words down until we get everything glued down and our pieces are ready for our tray. Now we're going to add our little stands and all I did was take these little blocks. I put a little bit of hot glue on the top. 
I stand up the sign and then stick the piece to the back. This way it's sitting the way it needs to sit. It's flush and I don't have to worry about it falling over forward because if you get it in the wrong place, that can happen. Once you get all your little stands on there, this set is complete and it's ready for your tear tray. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you liked, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We are also over on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest and would love it if you would click the link below and join us over there as well. If you enjoyed this episode, check out these videos for even more DIY inspiration. Bye, y'all.